Welcome to the RJI Futures Lab, where we help you make your organization more innovative. I'm Ruben Stern. This week, insight into what works in mobile news delivery and a new app targeted toward a culture of remix. David Cohn has been a pioneer in tailoring news for mobile devices, first at Circa, and now as executive producer for Al Jazeera's AJ+. We sat down with him to find out what's working when it comes to delivering mobile news. There are a few things that make the mobile experience different, says David Cohn. Unlike on television or on the web, users have less flexibility on mobile. Click here doesn't work on, on a mobile because a mobile person wouldn't click, they would touch, right? Um, and it feels really subtle, but it's like these little moments that break the experience to make it feel as though it's not authentic to your, your situation uh, ruin the experience. Users also use different gestures when consuming content on mobile platforms. A lot of people now are using what I would call Tinder-esque um, kind of, you know, swipes. And it's funny to call it that, but you know, Tinder was one of the first to do this, like you know, swipe for next. Um, and you see that now in email apps. Um, you see that now in different news apps. I think are starting to use that. And I think that's smart because that gesture um, has becoming is becoming um, part of the vocabulary of how users expect something to work. And so news organizations need to understand that vocabulary to say, oh, you know, this gives us the opportunity to do something that means something that can mean something to a user and how they interact with our content. Um, and those gestures are still being created, right? Like some, uh, a slightly more esoteric one is hold, right? You press and hold and something can happen. That gesture is not quite as widely adopted or understood by users as the swipe, sort of Tinder swipe, but it's there, right? And we can use it. In terms of content, Cohn says it's about telling the right story in the right format. It's trying to get people into the story, right? I'll give a few examples. I mean, one, within real time, just like as a small, like in terms of video, uh, real time are sort of like our day, daily videos, they come out, they're like a minute, minute and a half long. For example, the majority of those don't use too much natural sound. They're things that can be viewed and appreciated without sound, right? Because there's text on it and that's sort of how the, the news comes across. Polls, for example, where you just sort of say, you know, like you click a button, yes or no, um, of course have the highest uh, sort of engagement rate because it's just such a low barrier of entry. Um, but, you know, the debate cards that we have where there's actual conversations um, end up being really, really good, which is fascinating to me because, um, you know, because it's a specific pointed question, it doesn't necessarily derail into like, you know, some of the comments that, that we sort of imagine at the end of articles where there's no structure or there's no pointed question uh, to, the, to the conversation and it becomes very trollish. Um, and it's, you know, it's interesting and, and impressive to me to see how thought out comments can be in a mobile setting. In terms of what doesn't work on mobile? Right now, um, I think we want to change some of the structure around our quizzes. You know, I'm, I'm, I am convinced that quizzes can be a, a really great way to sort of get information across and become engaging. Um, and some of it might be UI things that we need to switch. Um, again, to keep in mind the, the sort of mobile setting. Like, so right now, for example, there's a timer, um, and we want to remove that. Looking forward, Cohn says news organizations need to understand users' behavior better and tailor to their needs on different platforms. An information provider, uh, an app or, or a news organization or whoever, should understand who I am across those devices and know, um, you know, about who I am or, or about what I'm doing based on which device I'm using and where I am um, and be able to treat me differently but with the context, right? Like, oh, we know that you watched that 10 minute documentary when, you know, last night when curled up on your, on your tablet device and now uh, we see you're on the small device and, you know, you seem to do this every day at the same time so it must be morning so we're going to treat you like a morning consumer and then we also know, you know, it, it becomes this sort of tailored experience that you can imagine um, with one provider across various screens, not just one. For the Futures Lab, this is Tatiana Daria. Along with this video, you'll find links to some resources about touchscreen interaction, along with links to additional coverage of the AJ Plus app. Mobile apps like Instagram, Snapchat, and GoPop succeeded based on a simple idea. Young mobile users like to interact around their own visual creations. An app called Trio pushes that forward. It offers a new way to assemble and share mashups of material from other sources. We met with the app's founder, a former Reynolds fellow here at RJI, to see how it works. So Trio, we're aiming to build the next big consumer creation platform in media mashups. So you take video, images, and GIFs with voice, music, and text overlays. And the twist of it is that it's much less about 
remixing your assets and much more about taking assets from your friends, from social media, from brands, just from the rest of the world and putting those together into new derivative content. Within the app, you can pull things from Instagram, from Vine, from um, image sources, from Giphy, from, uh, from iTunes. We're building in things like Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, from brands themselves. Basically, anywhere that media assets live, um, we're the place where all those come together and people can make new stuff out of other bits of existing content. We come at this from two observations. Uh, number one, mashups are already a thing, um, particularly among young people. Like taking assets that already exist, maybe they'll take like a clip of something they like and then film a reaction of themselves and then put a fail gif on the end and put some music underneath. This type of self-expression uh, already exists and they love consuming it um, and they love creating it when they can. But right now, the ability to actually create a mashup is very difficult actually. You just think about the whole workflow, right? You come up with your idea. Then you have to gather the assets. Um, by the way, most of this is done basically on a computer. There's no real mobile solution yet, which is what we're doing. And we want to provide value back to those original networks and those original content creators. So for a publisher, if they want to provide assets, we can help them get their users to remix it, create cool stuff, and then we can send people to wherever the publisher wants. Brands and marketers, they're trying to go from a one-way broadcast relationship to a two-way um, engagement relationship with their audiences. You know, when you can get your audience actually doing an activity of some kind, it just means they, they remember you, they build this loyalty. As they do that and they share it to their friends, that's the best kind of like authentic word of mouth distribution that you can get. The consumer app is free. You know, we're trying to be, you know, on, this, on the scale of like an Instagram, of a Vine. No one really owns uh, the mashup space yet, and we're trying to fill that space. Mashups in Trio include a link to each piece of source material. Leibovich says that feature could help increase traffic back to the original content. And that's it for this report from the RJI Futures Lab. I'm Ruben Stern. We'll see you in the future.